imagine you have to stay all day outside and below zero temperatures. Now what if it's not a day but a week? And not in a town, but out in the woods or in open field. The war in Ukraine continues, and the frost that comes in the trenches cannot be ignored. How not to freeze when a war takes place in winter, and how does cold influence combat? Learn with United24. Many conflicts of the past were fought during winters. The war between the USSR and Finland was even called the Winter War. Back then, despite the enormous advantage of the Soviet Union, Finns successfully resisted. The USSR has lost at least 126,000 soldiers, five times more than its adversary. Finns have effectively used weather conditions, equipping their troops with skis or using deer to transport mortars. In reality, general frost affects both sides of the conflict, giving an advantage to those who are better prepared for cold and understand the peculiarities of winter warfare. The White House's national security spokesperson, John Kirby, said that the U.S. has no expectation fighting in Ukraine will stop in winter. And he was right. Now, both sides have to take into account the quirks of winter warfare. And there are a lot of nuances to consider. For example, defense becomes easier than attack, as the fortified structures retain heat at least a little. Also, snow effectively reflects sound, decreasing a chance of an unexpected attack. Oddly enough, hydration might also become a problem. In the cold, human feels less thirsty, despite sometimes losing even more liquid than usual. Remember DiCaprio's character in The Revenant? He suffered dehydration despite being surrounded by snow. Due to some properties, snow cannot completely replace water, which also has to be considered. War is always an effort on the edge of the possible. But winter makes it even harder. There are three key elements of winter warfare that should be considered. Camouflage and clothes. Use of equipment. Fortification. What comes to your mind when you hear the word camouflage? Something green and brown, right? Yet these colors do not work with snow-covered landscapes. In winter, soldiers, equipment and even airplanes are painted white with dark patterns. Still, moving undetected becomes a real issue. Snow makes traces highly visible, making tracking the movement of vehicles or people much easier. For instance, fresh tracks on the satellite photos helped military experts to detect Russians actively equipping the airbase in Pribytki, Belarus. Hiding is not the only priority in winter. Another important task is not to get frozen. Americans faced a battle in frost in 1943, retrieving two of the Aleutian Islands from the Japanese. In that fight, Americans lost more men to cold and diseases than in combat. The average winter temperature in Ukraine is sub-zero. By the end of January, the temperature around Bakhmut, which hosts the fiercest fights, drops to 5 below zero Celsius. On some days, it even decreased to minus 15. You know that on the Donbass, it can be cold than the Vernads, I'll tell you. It's quite a continental climate, and here the snow is still in the open areas, the snow can be a lot colder than the Vernads. We don't talk about the whole Antarctic. Under such conditions, the quality of soldiers' clothes becomes crucial. Thankfully, apart from Ukraine stocks, the USA, Germany, Lithuania and other countries have sent tens of thousands of winter uniform sets. For instance, in October, Canadian Minister of Defense Anita Anand announced the transfer of 500,000 items of winter clothes to the AFU. Spending days in the cold requires wearing five layers of clothes. Regular underwear, thermal underwear, a sweater, a uniform, and a jacket. All these items are not a whim, but a necessity. In summer, a wounded soldier can wait a long time before evacuation arrives, while in winter, even an hour spent on the ground often becomes fatal. Russians, even those who are not wounded, die on Ukrainian soil due to poor gear. 
A video released in the first cold days of November shows a Russian soldier who checks positions of his unit only to find three bodies frozen to death. Heavy equipment requires additional maintenance to function in low temperatures. On the other hand, frost facilitates movement as the frozen soil can hold the weight of heavy machinery. However, it's not that simple. Army manuals of the USA provide a special method of vehicle movement, where the lead vehicle sets the initial track and the following vehicles offset to flatten and widen the trail. When the temperature is zero or plus one Celsius, the snow starts melting, creating a mesh where everything except for tracked machinery gets stuck. So the saying that the war is fought along the roads becomes especially important. Yet modern warfare is not only about roads and trenches. For the past few months, Russia continuously targets civilian infrastructure. Power plants and structures that provide heating and electricity to peaceful cities are under constant missile strikes. In December, the Ukrainian Prime Minister confirmed that nearly 50% of Ukraine's energy infrastructure is damaged or destroyed. Since this announcement, a few more missile attacks have been carried out all to leave people face to face with winter. Russia's fuel blackmailing of Europe has become another element of the winter contest. Putin and his propagandists threaten Europe to freeze in winter without Russian fuel. However, the EU has managed to accumulate enough fuel in advance. Gas reserves in Europe make up 82% as of mid-January, which is significantly over the average for this period in recent years. The weather in Europe this winter has also turned out to be quite warm. Meanwhile, the temperature in the east of Russia reaches minus 40 degrees Celsius. It is worth noting that around one-third of households in Russia, a country with the world's biggest hydrocarbon deposits, don't have access to natural gas. As it turns out, Putin and Russians lose yet another war. The war of fuel blackmailing. Imagine breaking through enemy's defense lines and advancing. Now you need to fortify your new positions. When the temperature is below zero, you have to dig through frozen soil to form trenches. Later on, you somehow need to insulate them and warm them up. Electric heaters or simple wood stoves are used for this purpose. However, you need to be careful with them, as hot objects are well visible through thermal visors, instantly demasking your positions. Ukrainians have battled Russians since the hybrid invasion of 2014, so they have experience in winter warfare. They also exchange experience with NATO soldiers, as the alliance has trained for combat in the cold for a long time. The USA, for example, has such training facilities in Alaska, Vermont and Colorado. Starting in 2006, Norway hosts a large-scale cold response training in which up to 30,000 soldiers from different NATO countries take part annually. Hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians, who not so long ago were occupied with quite peaceful things, had to learn everything in a real-time mode. Frost can kill just as well as a bullet or shrapnel. At this very moment, Ukrainians fight against both prevailing enemies and the winter. Support forces of good, so that nobody has to celebrate Christmas in trenches ever again. Ми на своїй рідній землі, тому вона нам і допомагає, скажімо так. А їм, ну, їм важко буде в будь-якому разі, якби це не було тут. Просто так вони отсюда не поїдуть. Поїдуть разве що в мусорних пакетах, скажімо так.